Splinterlands is considered a blue chip in NFT gaming. It was battle tested and it has a huge community supporting it. When it was released in early 2021, there were barely any other options and competition in Web3 gaming. But with so many AAA NFT games popping up, do you think it's still worth to play Splinterlands right now? And you are watching the Crypto Herd, I'm Bruno and today we're going to analyze Splinterlands current status. But before I get started, make sure to subscribe to the Crypto Herd so you know exactly which Web3 games are worth your valuable time. In order to answer this question, we first have to analyze a few facts, like how big is Splinterlands community right now? And for that, we can go to Radar, where we can see that the monthly active users took a hit of 10% but still 340,000 monthly active users is quite impressive for an NFT game. I would say that Splinterlands right now has one of the biggest player bases in NFT gaming. Besides this, their loss in the player base could also be related with the bear market. As you guys know, there are lots of crypto tourists who simply leave the space at the end of every bull cycle. When it comes to its gameplay, I'll say that it's a bit too simple for me because it's not really my type of game. But the truth is that there are lots of people who actually like this combination of having a trading card game, which is also an auto battler. Besides this, there's going to be land gameplay really soon. Besides being a new source of profitability, it's also going to add a new layer to the gameplay. So right now all you can do is place some monsters on the board and watch them battle each other. But in the future you're going to have items and spells. So even after you start a match, you're going to be able to interfere in that match with items and spells. So probably the gameplay is going to get better and I think that lots of players who actually left the ecosystem might be coming back after that big update. So as you can see on Key 3 of 2022 they're already working on land gameplay and on Key 4 of 2022 is when you're going to start to be able to play with your land plots. Then besides all of these, this game also falls into the play and earn category, meaning that there's a possibility that you're going to be able to monetize your in-game activity. But the truth is that in order to do this, you're going to have to spend countless hours mastering the game and farming new cards and grinding and watching YouTube videos on how to actually get better results when playing Splinterlands. And only after you go through this process, you're going to start to have a decent chance of getting rare cards. Cards. And some of these cards go for quite high prices. If we actually go to Splinterlands Marketplace, you can see that the top card is being sold by 2.5 million, which doesn't mean that there's going to be a buyer for this card, but the truth is that there's the possibility of making a decent amount of money if you actually become skilled in Splinterlands. Then another cool feature is that you can also rent these same cars. Look at this one, $70 a day. I don't think it's going to be rented, but some of them are going for three, one, two dollars per day. And it's not much, I know. But imagine that you have like 20 of these and you're renting all of them. Well, that's serious passive income with a video game. So concluding, Splinterlands took a hit in their player base, but this could be due to the bear market and they still hold hold one of the biggest player bases in NFT gaming right now. 340,000 monthly active users is impressive. Then when it comes to the gameplay, it's a bit too simple, but they're going to upgrade it. And with land gameplay, I do believe that lots of players might come back to the ecosystem. Then when it comes to Splinterlands as a play and earn game, I do believe that that only happens for top players. If you're starting right now to play Splinterlands, don't expect to be earning anything in the next week or next month. It's going to take a long time. So personally, I do think that Splinterlands is still a blue chip in NFT gaming and it's going to keep that way. So answering the question of the video, is it still worth to play Splinterlands right now? Yes, it is. If you truly enjoy the game, if you're just looking for a quick bug, the possibility to earn anything for new players is really low right now. So if that's your goal, then it's not worth it. But what do you think? Have you been having a good experience with Splinterlands? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the metaverse.